Hey, what's up everybody? This is a tutorial on how to fix uh, your platter. Uh, if you notice, there's a slight drift when I hit stop. All right. The best way to test this though is always have, however you go on DJ. So I have a piece of wax paper that I've cut. I have my slip mat that I use and of course your vinyl. So what I do is I test it like this. Let it run for a few seconds, hit stop, and you still see the drift. So that's what we want to alleviate or eliminate, better yet said. And I'm going to show you how to do that. When you remove your platter, make sure that you stick your two fingers through here. The two pointer fingers or whatever you want to call them. But uh, lift straight up, not sideways, or you can go this way. This way is easier for me and better, which is grab it, put thumbs on both edges, lift straight up. So uh, I wouldn't suggest, you know, going any other way. But, uh, that's about it. That's another method. So I just showed you three different ways on how to do it. Here you're going to find one, two, three, four, five screws that you're going to remove. Make sure your power is powered off. Disconnect for safety reasons. I don't want anybody electrocuted and their parents, mom, dad, or brother, sister, somebody calling me saying, hey, it's your fault, the instructional that you made zap my friend, child, whatever. Uh, that's the way it goes. So anyway, make a long story short, uh, there is some voltage under here, so that's about it. Let's keep that in mind. All right, guys, once you remove your lid, you're going to get to this area where you'll see your spindle, the board, and what you want to draw your attention to is if you make a figurative line or imaginary line between here and your tone arm or the base of your tone arm you will see one that says pitch that's not the one we're going to mess with we're going to mess with the one just over a little bit and let me see if i can get this to focus a little bit for you guys this one is the one that we want to go for so it has uh it might look like this and what i'll do is i'll zoom in even more for you guys uh, if you adjust it to the right, it actually spins the platter backwards longer. What we want to do is make it go forward as it normally does when you hit start. But as soon as you hit stop, this activates and it'll just kick your, your platter backwards for a second, half a second, depending on the duration that we set this at. And that's what's going to make your platter stop. So in other words, it's going and then it's just that bump to make it stop and that's all it is. So uh, anyway, that's what we're going to be messing with. I'm going to zoom this in a little bit better for you guys. All right, fellas, so this is what we're looking at, or should I say ladies and gentlemen, because we don't know if you females might be watching this. Um, this is the area that we want to worry about right here. So the one I'm pointing at with the tip of this uh, stylus. So anyway, um, it's actually labeled brake. In this case, it's VR201 and uh, VR is variable resistor just for those that want to know what different things mean. R is resistor, C is capacitor, IC is uh, integrated circuit. So just to give you an idea, so when you look at these things, you're like, oh, D is for diode, R is for resistor, you know, you have a, a more better idea of what you're looking at. So anyway, in short, like I said, uh, what we saw is it was moving and when it stopped, it still had a drift. So we're going to have to juice it up just a little bit. That means we're going to have to turn it to the right. And when we do that, hopefully that'll alleviate that issue. So give me a few seconds. I'm going to get my screwdriver. And uh, in this case, it's going to be a Phillips head. It's better if you get uh, one that's designed for potentiometers. Uh, they're generally a plastic handle with uh, maybe a small metal blade. <coughs> Those work great. In this case, I'm going to be using just uh, one of these, so anyway, it'll do the job, so. Don't bump it just a tad bit, it wasn't a whole lot. So from there, we're going to test it out and see what happens, so give me a second. Alright, so we're going to fire it up, turn it on, spin it, stop. Still has a light drift. crank it just a little bit more
a little bounce back. That's not bad. Okay, so we're gonna run with that. Uh, you can sit there and fine trim it as much as you want, whatever, it's up to you. So anyway, that's that. Uh, one of the other added features that I've added to this one is uh, I'm able to spin through that. Reverse. So anyway, um, that's a added uh, feature. I'll do a, a long throw shot. Hold on one sec. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we're done with uh, our adjustment. And uh, anyway, once you are completed, make sure that everything's reassembled properly. You can power up and uh, you can test. So as you can see, I mean, it stops instantly. I mean, we're good with that. I'm happy with it. That's the outcome I wanted. Uh, if you're wanting your deck to do that effect where, you know, uh, I don't know how many people use Serato or whatever, but uh, where you can actually slow down the way it spins down. So in other words, as soon as you hit stop, it's like this is normal play and then all of a sudden it just slows down uh, to nothing. I wouldn't do the screw adjustment for that. What I would do is actually do it this way. Your track is playing, hit power off and just put your finger there and it'll do the same thing. The reason why I say power off is because you don't want to throw your motor off. So there's a couple of sensors, quartz lock sensors that uh, are picking up information from the platter position and uh, basically it's just telling it, look, it's rotating at this speed, it's getting feedback and um, you know, I'm giving you power, you're supposed to be at 33 or 45, whatever your setting is and you're slowing down, something's going wrong. After a while, you're going to throw the thing off, so I wouldn't um, suggest doing that. So anyway, like I said, um, or you can grab your vinyl, do it that way, but um, it's, you know, you really going to have to work at um, the amount of pressure that you put in and whatnot. So um, anyway, uh, with all that said and done, like I said, I use for spin back, if, or if you're a scratch DJ, I use um, wax paper, the slip mat. This is uh, Dr. Suzuki Serato slip mat, and uh, that's about it. And I know some of you guys are like, well, that's a tractor controller. Why is he mix matching it? Well, it's like Gucci, Prada, Louis, you know, all put together. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. Anyway, um, no, what, I, what it boils down to is. You can use MIDI controllers however you want. You can mix and match them as long as you're able to MIDI map them and then, um, you know, use your choice of software. I mean, you know, if you want to do Serato Virtual DJ uh, Tractor, it's all up to you. I mean, whatever works best for you. I've seen some people that got, you know, shall we say the Rolls Royce of everything as far as uh, equipment, software, and everything else, but they can't take two tracks that are the same exact beat, same exact everything, match it up, line it up, uh, create a loop or any of that so um, it really depends on your skill level how you want to use things and how you want to do things or what you want to incorporate so anyway we do a lot of playing around on a technical level uh, if you watch my youtube channel you'll see that you know we do a lot of playing around so anyway uh, with all that said and done feel free to ask any questions and uh, that's about it all right later this is DJS so we're out